is part of a mini class series that I'm doing on how to create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, fourth thing. Uh, this particular video focuses on the correct sentence structure portion of it and what that would look like. It is by no means complete. I go through it very fast in this video. I cover a lot of area. I do cover the major main points of what you would do, but there are some little particulars in there that I didn't cover. Uh, not um, consciously I didn't cover, it's just I didn't, because I was conscious of, I wanted it to be a short video, I just didn't think to cover it. I am with the vision of doing a comprehensive, complete, all-inclusive video regarding this matter in the future or even doing a seminar on it where I cover each little minute detail with a fine tooth comb. Uh, you know, if you were to actually contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and you'd want to uh, want my help in creating something like this, I would definitely go through every single step with you uh, with completeness and give you closure on that. But this is just to give the general viewer a uh, an overall glimpse of what it takes to create one of these things with correct grammar and the basic mechanics behind it, like what goes into it as compared to other documents. And uh, there will be other videos in this series uh, covering other portions of it, like, for example, the syntaxing portion, syntaxing of the evidence. But this covers the portion that the claimant would create. Um, when they are addressing a certain kind of trespass. So, please enjoy. So let's begin the correct sentence structure portion of the mini class. As you can see, I've created a document contract postal vessel court venue. I'm gonna go through each part of it and explain some things real quick or not so quick with regards to the grammar uh, and things as you see I have the flag the 1 by 1.9 flag in the upper port side of the document over on this side adjacent to it in the starboard side you would put a stamp of a whole number denomination now whether that's a one dollar stamp or two or three whatever you want but it must be a whole number cannot be fraction and then you would autograph over that stamp with your correct live life claim name. I begin by giving closure to this flag. It's correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, flag of this document, contract, postal vessel, court, venue. And you see here I've also put abbreviations next to these words, which have given closure to what the abbreviation means. And in case some sort of modification happens along the way, I've put for extra closure in brackets and in italics, the correct flag ratio is 1 by 1.9. Now, I realize the brackets and italics and, and such things like that take the words off the page. But the thing is, you and I can still read it. Right? So the reason I do that is for closer to people in the fiction who don't know anything about correct sentence structure, which the vast majority of them don't. That's why I'm doing this. This is for the balance of honor and grace. This is where the grace comes in. You will see that I translate every claim into plain English. So there can be no misunderstanding and no excuses. I mean, think about it. If you did something like this and you wrote the claim in Russian, and you tried to send it to someone who only spoke English, how would they be able to read it? They wouldn't understand it. So that would mean that would call your volition into question because now you know that they don't understand it, yet you still use it, and then you might try and use something, some goofy uh, fiction maxim like, well, ignorance of the law is no excuse for breaking the law. That's ridiculous. You must establish knowledge and if the knowledge isn't there, then you have to provide it or be able to provide it. And if you can't, then you have no position of authority at all because authority comes from knowledge. So 
we've given some closures here. We've given closure to the vessel name, the vessel date, and the vessel number, which is just the registered post number that you would get at your postal station if you mail this registered. You can mail it registered. You can mail it certified. You also get a number with certified mail, whichever. Uh, I prefer to use uh, registered mail for most things, though, but not all things. There are other court mechanics which would necessitate using the return card, which you can use either with registered or certified mail, uh, but it just depends upon the scenario you're in, and it'd be a good idea to study postal mechanics in order to learn that. This is not about postal mechanics or flag mechanics. Or banking mechanics this is about grammar mechanics so you see here in the first claim claim zero I give closure to where the knowledge comes from for this claimant sensation the cognition is with these claims of the facts with the knowledge by the claimant author and then I translate that my claims of knowledge originate from my understanding of the data collected by my senses i.e. first-hand knowledge. So my senses, claim and sensation, the understanding, cognition, is with the claims, the document, contract, postal vessel, court, venue, claims of the facts with the knowledge. I'm telling you, my claims of the facts come from the understanding of my sensation and my knowledge. So therefore, every, you know, the next claim that I will start off with, I will use claimant's knowledge, as you see down here claimant's knowledge, but I've given closure as to where that knowledge comes from and where my claim of the facts come from. It comes from my senses, which can't be argued, which could be the reason why the word sense or sensation is not in Black's Law Dictionary anywhere, because you can't argue with what someone, you can't tell someone how they're feeling. You can't. So the first claim, I give closure to the flag. For the claimant and author's oite of the flag is with these claims of the correct knowledge and correct closure with the Title IV flag of the correct sentence structure with these correct communications of the document contract author with the balance of their honor and grace with the position of peace and neutrality with the maintenance of the rule one and rule equal with the authorization by the claimant and author, author's knowledge. So the use of the Title IV flag is based entirely upon my knowledge and closure of quantum grammar technology and my skill in conveying it with intent of doing no harm. So that's what I'm using the flag for. And I've been using it for five years, very successfully using this same mechanic, this same claim. And I've got a 100% success rate in my cases. Next claim. For the claim is knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the damage with the trespass of the AIRAS with the fictitious conveyance of grammar with the documents by the claimant's witness. So I'm saying that the IRS is using a modified grammar, fictitious conveyance of grammar. See attached to evidence. And that's where the syntax portion will come in. Uh, it won't be in this video. It'll be in a different video. But the evidence the uh, of the fictitious conveyance of grammar will be the syntaxing of their document that I will do. So I'm claiming a damage with the trespass of fictitious conveyance of grammar. And the third claim is for this claim of the damage with the trespass of the IRS documents with the port of the confidentiality with the location of the 1234 Coral Blade Grotto Antarctica with the witness by the claimant. Now you see this claim of damage is a trespass with them sending documents without permission to my private domicile uh, location. And I'm witnessing it. Now notice, I have underlined all the compound facts. Notice that any fact that I use that has a particle of negation in it, I put a sick after it, saying that I am perfectly aware that there is a particle of negation in it, and I'm using it and claiming it, and it's in my dictionary because of the easy communication. So you see here, like, the location of Antarctica. I can't very well go rename a location that's already 
in the book, so to speak. It's not within my wherewithal to do that. So I'll just use it, but I know it's wrong because it has a vowel in front of a consonant, so I sick it. Uh, another thing, if you notice here, when I put the, the brackets up, I put the period after the bracket. Because the bracket's not there. There's nothing there. Not even a space. There's no space there. So basically, this just says, by this claimant, period. There's no space. The brackets do not exist. See what I'm saying? Four corner rule. It's not here. It's somewhere else. It's in a different <laughs> domain. So that's why I do that. Now you can put the period at the end here or you can put it after claimant. It's entirely up to you. And up here, the period is missing. So as you can see, to err is human. You can go over a document 10 times, 15 times, and you will find errors like this, like I just found here. So, so there should be a period either after this bracket here in claim number one or after the E in knowledge, but not underlined after the E in knowledge, but a period nonetheless. I only proofread this document one time, so I'm sure we're going to find other mistakes like that. Have fun pointing them out. And I do a uh, highly recommended if you create your own document contract postal vessel core venue that you do go over it multiple multiple times or have a friend of yours go over it and see if they see any errors or if, it, if you're so inclined pay someone to go over it that knows what they're doing it's up to you though contract is by consent so then the fourth claim is for the quest claim of the claimant is with the proof and testimony and certification of any correct contract with the joinder of the claimant and of the IRS with the authorization of the correct sentence structure autographs with the consent and permission and participation by the claimant. I said the IRS must show evidence that they have contracted with me using my correct name, using correct grammar, and that I have authorized such a contract using my correct autograph. So I'm telling them that I have a quest, and my quest is for proof. I want proof, testimony, and certification, evidence of any correct contract with the joinder between myself and the IRS with the authorization of the correct sentence structure autographs, live life claimants, correct true bill contract, whatever you want to call it, with my consent and authorization. Show it to me. I'm on a quest for it. Because if you think you can contact with me in any capacity, then you must show that you're on the geometric level playing field of correct sentence structure. So number five is for the claim of the performance is with the summary corrections of the 12B7 through 12B1 with the consummation by the perpetual case. So basically what I'm saying there is that I complied with 12B7 through 12B1 that this uh, perpetual case is in compliance with those mechanics. This document complies with, yeah, just what I just said. Notice I put here for the one of the two, meaning that's how many pages are in this particular section, two pages. If there are five pages, you would put for the one of the five, period. Now you can do that either just manually write it in or you can type it in however it works as long as you have that on there it gives a continuance of the evidence so that it can't be tampered with pages cannot be removed so number six for the claim of the solutions is IRS performance of the quo warranto complaint correct sentence structure contract or of the vacation with the matter of the perpetual case with the tender by this claimant grammar auditor document contract court authority and by this author and I say, I offer three solutions to this trespass. One, the IRS may create a quarantal complaint showing their correct sentence structure authority in this matter. Two, they may show a correct sentence structure contract between us. Or three, vacate the case immediately. Dasvidanya. So as you can see here, um, I put the case number here. That's the perpetual case number. I claim the title of document contract court authority, 
which I do have a, a registered number for that. I've had that for a couple of years. I choose not to use the fiction word judge. Now, there's nothing really wrong with judge. I mean, you can use it if you want to, if it's, you're so inclined. But I feel like that belongs to the fiction, just like I feel like the word legal or anything that has to do with it belongs to the fiction. I don't use it. So I use authority. I think it's much more powerful myself. Now, mechanically, you look up here, you see a comma after contract. Now that, if I would go back over and proofread this again, I would eliminate that comma between the contract and or there. It's not necessary. Okay, 7A is for the word term hieroglyphic closure of this document contract, blah, 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 is with the location by the dictionary. If you have any questions about any terms or symbols in this document, please refer to the included contract dictionary, which would necessarily be included with the document. There would be a dictionary. That's where you get your closure. And it's a correct sentence structure dictionary. 7B is for the ease of the communications with the space function of the seam locations with the paragraphs and singular claims of the document with the volition by the claimant and by the author. I use spacing between the sentences, paragraphs, and sections for the ease of the reading. So I'm giving closure to the spaces that I've used in between each section. As long as you give closure, it's not a break in the continuance of the evidence because I am the author of this. I have authorized it. What I say goes. It's my court. Uh, and number eight is for the claim of the drogue is with the length of the two weeks with the authorization by this claimant, grammar, auditor, and by this author. And so I say that they have two weeks, that's a drogue, to respond to this perpetual case. So if I don't hear back from them in two weeks, then the matter is off the table. So then we have the uh, authorization at the bottom here. We have for the live life claimant, author, document, contract, court authority, and in my name, copyright, copy claim, and in my autograph here. And then I would put a thumbprint on my name there. And I might also put my uh, fate writ volition stamp here over that if I'm so inclined. Um, what else? Uh, so I've gone over the basics very, very fast of how to create a document contract postal vessel court venue, uh, concentrating on the grammar of it. I've given closure to all the different little things you can put in there. Now, of course, there's much more you can include in there. There's much more I could say, but I don't want this to turn into a huge video. Uh, if you're looking for, if you have correct sentence structure knowledge, if you think that you have the knowledge necessary to create one of these, and you need to learn about postal mechanics, uh, banking mechanics, flag mechanics, etc., you can contact me and I will give you a correct sentence structure test to make sure I can certify your knowledge so that you can climb up on the geometric level playing field and I'll drop a contract and help you with your uh, flag mechanics or your uh, postal mechanics or, or things, anything like that. Everything is basically included in here. There's other things you could have included in here or I could have included in here uh, particular to each case. It just depends upon what, what type of claim it is exactly. Uh, for example, um, after the two-week drogue timeline expires, I would probably take this uh, document and resend it. I would send it again after those two weeks, and after those two weeks, uh, I would put another two-week drogue on it. And then, uh, let's see, what would that take us up to? And then I would wait after those two weeks if I don't hear back from them. And then it would be 45 days. I would wait for probably the 45th day. And then I would send another one. And that's three. And if they don't respond back to that, it's done. It's over. If I don't hear back from them. But I'd probably do that. You know, just to, just to cross all the T's and dot all the I's. So two weeks and then another two week and then wait until the 45 day from the beginning, wait another 45 and then send a third one and then it's done. Unless they correspond back and then that's a completely different scenario and then uh, other mechanics would have to happen then. 
and other measures would be taken. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little rush through the document. And as I said, I only proofread it one time, so if you, you know, for the, how can you say it, for the grammar nerds out there, you can go through and see if you can find any mistakes in there. I definitely make a lot less than I used to. But if you do find any, feel free to point them out in the comments and I'll publish it. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning correct sentence structure, contact me at the email address below there and uh, I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute consultation and we'll see if that is exactly what you want to do. And uh, look forward to the next part. I think I'm going to do... Uh, it's probably just going to be two parts. The next part's going to have to do with the evidence that would be attached to this and the banking mechanics of syntax and how one would syntax uh, the evidence. Thank you. I'll catch you next time.